Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. With rising renewables installations globally and locally, South Africa is considering stimulating local manufacturing around solar, wind and batteries. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the prospects. Hi Terence. Hi Snow. What have been the main constraints to the localization of renewables components to date? Well, I think the main one has been the boom and bust cycles in South Africa's renewables market. And it didn't look like it was going that way because in from about 2011 till 2014, we were on a consistent procurement trajectory. And we were, we were procuring about a thousand megawatts a year, um, most of which was uh, solar and wind. We also did concentrated solar power, so like solar PV and then some, some concentrated solar power and a few other smaller technologies. But we were going on uh, that trajectory. And then there was this dislocation uh, from 2014. Uh, there was a, a bid window out and it seemed to be delayed and delayed. And then 2015, it became clear that Eskom under the leadership then wasn't prepared to procure any more renewable energy, claiming at the time that there was enough coal in the system, enough security of supply. We didn't need new capacity, which we know has turned out to be a, a, a re decidedly wrong. So, so we had this disruption to the market from 2015 till 2019 when the program got re-established. And we only saw the first fresh procurement happening in about 2021. So it's really about that. The, the demand was starting to pick up. We saw investments starting to happen around that demand. Um, investments, some of which failed. We are the most you know, high profile one being the DCD wind tower project at Kucha, where the project had to get clo was closed and that equipment has subsequently been auctioned off. So that's really been the problem around building capacity. It was starting to be built. Um, we, uh, we still have capacity in the system, especially around the balance of plants uh, to manufacture that. But around the big ticket components, there's just a, a breakdown of trust uh, in, in from a manufacturing side. You make a big investment, then there's no demand. You know, so we need to reestablish that trust. And unfortunately, subsequent to the restarting of public procurement, it's also been a bit of a boom and bust or an un, too many uncertainties. The risk mitigation uh, was supposed to close very short term gaps that that dragged on forever. We only saw a couple of projects cross the line, the biggest one being Skatec, which had the official launch of that massive uh, solar plant and battery at Kenhart, but there are a few others. And then we've had uh, several bid windows which have not really performed up to expectations. We are now into bid window seven, and we'll have to see what the, the responses are to that. But on the public side, that's been the main major constraint, a sort of a lack of security and visibility of demand, political interference, which has led to a real breakdown in trust as to whether you can really invest in component manufacturing. Are there any signs that these constraints may be easy? On the public procurement side, as I say, the, the procurement is starting to happen again, and there's quite a bit uh, of action in the marketplace around uh, solar, wind, and battery storage. We're seeing a lot of that uh, taking place, but we have to see how the market responds to that to see whether the market can actually, uh, it does have the ability to respond to that procurement given some of the constraints, partic particularly for wind and the grid, grid connection. So th we'll have to see how that evolves, but yes, there's a, there's a, a restarting and there's a, some energy around that. We, I think <coughs> there's definitely um, a new element that has emerged is really through the, the private procurement, the private PPAs, both at a large scale, which are uh, which is really driven by energy intensive businesses and mines that have started to really invest in wind and solar uh, and in their own generation. And also at the very micro or medium and then micro level, so medium size commercial and industrial installations and then the rooftop solar, I think we've now got an installed base of about over 5,000 uh, megawatts. Last year, we installed something like 2,500 megawatts, which is, is massive in world terms, not only in, in South African terms. So we're seeing that that uh, is offering where public procurement was a boom and bust cycle, 
having the combination of public and private now and me, uh, large and small and medium sized that is offering a much better sort of stable demand base and uh, a market intelligence report published by Green Cape this week shows that on the large scale side this is almost equal now uh, if you look towards 2030 so about 200 billion rands worth of investment coming from public 200 billion rands worth of investment coming from private if they all, all materialize adding around 30 gigawatts by the, by the end of this decade. So if that happens at the pace uh, of about two gigawatts a year, that is sort of starting to give us the sort of base load that is needed of demand uh, that can make it interesting for people to, re to invest in the, the local manufacturer. So we'll, again, will the public procurement come through the private is definitely coming through, but will it be sustained, you know, as load shedding has waned in the, in the last few weeks? For instance, at the household level, everyone will be, you know, thinking again whether it will be worth it. So we'll, we'll and also banks and uh, giving credit for, for solar systems become a lot uh, tighter. Um, so the households that could afford have done something. The households where it's more of a difficult investment, especially given the cost of living crisis that we are in, you know, banks are, are, are um, not approving the credit that is needed for some of these systems. But on the whole, you know, there's a, there's a need. We need to close a 6,000 megawatt gap. And there's now not only one pool to fish in, it's a much bigger ocean with um, uh, these uh, uh, private projects coming through both at the large scale, at the medium scale and at the small scale. What is and should South Africa be doing to prepare? I think that uh, the big next step from South Africa's perspective is to get the South African Renewable Energy Master Plan published and out into the public domain. You know, these master plans in other sectors haven't really been delivering um, as, you know, as we would have hoped. You know, so South Africa is known for social compacting. These are social compacting type documents and you know, in all the sectors that they've come through on, um, the, there's been some real success stories and progress and some where there's been really, uh, the, the master plans haven't really uh, delivered to expectations. So again, here, I think we have to be cautious as to how much it will de deliver, but there's been a lot of work done by the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy, the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, with the stakeholders in these value chains around solar, wind, battery uh, in particular. And we now need to see the fruits of that labor. And uh, it seems that the document is now finalized um, uh, as, as a waiting sign off at ministerial level. And possibly in the next weeks or months, we'll see the publication of sort of a roadmap now for how we see ourselves approaching the opportunities around now that there's more um, levers to pull in terms of demand, not just the public procurement, but the private PPAs and the, uh, the rooftop solar, etc., whether that is built into the document, I assume it would be, and then to see whether manufacturers then can ri rise to that opportunity and start aligning their business models to hopefully what is really a going to be a multi-decade rollout of wind and solar and battery storage, and then eventually scale up our manufacturing businesses not only to be supplying that demand but our neighborhood we've got the african free trade continental free trade agreement if we're making these components and again it's going to have to be selected because some of these components are going to be very difficult to compete in because for instance chinese manufacturers are so dominant in certain of these components but there's a willingness around the world and a desire around the world to have more players in the system because of what we saw around the concentration of supply chains during the pandemic. It became actually a major risk factor having that. So having South Africa as a participant in these value chains, having the continental free trade agreement beyond our domestic market as an opportunity, I think we could become an enticing manufacturing destination for this. But it's not a certainty. A lot of work, a lot of sweat, a lot of effort needs to go into it. And on the planning side, I think a lot has gone into the master plan 
and now we need to see what that looks like and let people engage with it and see whether we can really become uh, a key hub for supplying some of these uh, systems and components into the domestic, the African, and potentially even the global markets. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.